What's up, everyone? Sunday morning edition, Left Coast Leaves podcast. This is like video wow. church. It is like video church. <laughs> Virtual church. Oh, fuck. Coffee pod. Yeah, coffee pod. And some brand placement. Oh, very nice. Yeah, a little, uh, little clue in the coffee this morning just for this occasion. A little pep in your step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I learned how to play crib last night. I like crib. Crib's a lot of fun. Yeah, Reg taught me at 55 years old. Very nice. Yeah, and I finally learned how to play crib. I watched my parents play it for decades, and uh, yeah, I didn't care. But uh, there's a great. Uh, I, I have a crib app. I enjoy it. It's a good time killer. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yes. And maybe I'll have to sign up for that. Can I? Can I play you? Can I play versus you online? No, you just play against. Like I'm oh, sure okay. there's an app where you can play against other people, but yeah, probably. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So this is kind of a somber day in a in a in a in the middle of a every day is kind of somber, but it would have been the day after the regular season. Yeah, so it would have been either uh, excitement or wow, what happened? <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you want to talk about that first, or do you want to talk about that after we do a little quick draft recap of 2012 and 2011? Oh, good either way, your choice. Yeah, I don't know. Let's talk about what would have what might have been. Yeah, so they would have finished against the Habs last night. Presumably the Habs would have nothing to play for. Yeah, I think we would have been getting primed to play uh, Tampa Bay in the first round. Yeah, I think that's the way it would have went. I, I, I feel that, well, how many games did we lose out on? 11? 12? Whoa. 11 or 12. Yeah, 11 or 12. Yeah, and I think they were, they were getting healthy. I, I, did, I did see a, a report that said that Mikhaev would have been cleared to play i find that surprising well end of march they said three months like of no contact or <laughs> yeah like a, a re-evaluation kind of thing so but then i, I saw a report about 10 days ago that said he actually would have been cleared to play he was 100 percent considered healed so yeah and i mean those guys they do feel faster they always under promise and over deliver on injuries typically anyways Smart way to go about it. It always is in life in general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never oversell yourself. You might have to live up to it. Exactly. Yeah. So Tampa would have, Tampa wouldn't have caught Boston. No. And, and uh, we, and if we would have like, like struggled though, we, we could have easily not made the playoffs. Like Florida depends with like with Florida. It's just, yeah. Such a, it's like all that investment from September on. Like it's just it's just a waste. <laughs> it's it's all gone. And this even this even feels worse. I I actually now that we've experienced both, I'd rather lose a season to a labor dispute. <laughs> like this is this is fucked, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like this is just extremely extremely uh, disheartening on many on many levels and just a a stupid work stoppage. But uh, and it's it's like I think it's seriously concerning of for next year where. Like the governor of California said yesterday, being like, as much as I want to see like baseball and football, like, like yeah. don't think so. <laughs> I, th I think the I think the most telling pro sports quote to me so far came from the uh, NFL's chief medical officer yesterday. Yep. Yeah, and uh, just to paraphrase him, he said, uh, "We we could get we could go back, but then as soon as there's one new case, everything shuts down again." Right. So like as soon yep. as you there's, there's a public gathering and one confirmed case comes out of that public gathering or whatever, then we're back to square one. So, man, like I'm in honor of that. I'm wearing my rider jersey today because I'm feeling really bad for the CFL because there's te there's teams that might not even survive. Like, the, I, don't, I, don't, I think yeah. the riders might be the only team that's profitable in that league. It's and, just, uh, uh, like it's it's not good. Like, no. It's, it's going to be – it could be, like, really a weird scenario with, um, with like, the professional sports and that quote there where if it's, like, how comfortable are people going to be to go sit in a 20,000-seat arena? Like, sure, from home, no problem. Like, mm -hmm. like we're, we're excelling at that right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, this virus is still – like, it's, it's still obviously going to be spreading. It's not going to go away. Like, no. I think that's the reality here until there's a vaccine where – yeah, until it's vaccinated for it'll continue just to come up in pockets and with its ability to spread as fast as it does, I mean it's it's not like the common cold, it's not like the flu. 
it spreads yeah. easily. I did uh, my first quarantine haircut on Friday night. I, I saw the remnants in the shower on Instagram, in the bottom uh, of the, the shower. How that wasn't the go? shower. That was the sink. That oh, was the sink. Okay. Yeah. How did it go? Were you pretty happy uh, with it? Yeah. It turned out fine. Uh, what did you do? You just trimmed the sides? Yeah. Okay. Did, you, did you touch the long part at all with the scissors or no? Not yet. We weren't ready to go down that road, eh? No. No. And I did it after a bunch of beers, too. <laughs> I, I grabbed this morning. I grabbed the. <laughs> yeah, that's always good to have the clippers out after that. I grabbed the first, um, the first hat that I could grab to put on this morning. Your hair is yeah. looking long. It is very. It's going to be very long. And this is. The, I'll turn my hat around so we can see what hat uh, I picked up this morning. Washington Capitals. Why are you wearing the Washington Capitals hat? Because it was the first hat in the hat basket, so I just grabbed it before I came, sat down here. Do but, you have uh, a, a, a hair trimmer? Like, are you going to cut your hair? I'm going au naturel until December if I have to. Like, I'm gonna be yeah. like, I'm gonna be David Hasselhoff. Mine was like, I didn't have a good haircut like in two months, and it was so long it was driving me nuts. I was like, fuck it, I'm done. Well, this, this is sketchy. Um, we'll get back to hockey after this, but. My hairdresser texted me last week, and I've been going to her for about 20 years. She used to own that little place at the at the Can West Mall, Mr. Shears. Mm -hmm. And so she's out on her own now. She does everybody in our family, cuts our hair anyways. And uh, she uh, she texted me and said, hey, Trevor, you know, I'm kind of, kind of, I've done, I've been isolated for two weeks. I'm feeling kind of stir crazy. I'm I'm gonna open the salon for single appointments, like one person at a time. Lock the doors, and I, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, I get that you have to make a living and stuff like that, but how do you know who's walking in? How do I know what your situation is? And I mean, I, I, I thought it was pretty irresponsible. I, I, she's probably just going stir crazy, like I said, and yeah. financially. Hardship. I yeah, guess. and people will take her up on it, though. People will. Sticking with the Atlantic Division, as we just sort of say what might have happened, would Florida have made, been a wild card in your mind? I haven't done that depth of a dive. In no. Knowing, like, because there's a bunch of teams in the Metro that were very good. Columbus is kind of running into the injury bug. Like, it would Island, have been Islanders exciting. Would have been a really exciting final month of the season. It would have been really exciting. And the West was wild. <laughs> yeah. So pardon the expression, but that would have been just an insane race. Of even just, they, they could have swapped, the one, two, three teams in the West could have swapped. Like everyone could have taken a turn at first in the last 10 games of the season. Yeah. It was that crazy. So, yeah. But we're here for our over here because this is just all we got but uh we're, there's literally nothing else to do there's nothing else to do and uh we're, we're we're gonna continue our draft our draft re uh rewrites here and uh, 2012 so, is like just like do we even need to talk about it like we no it's a no-brainer we have the best player in that draft on our team yeah so because we have it we have the best player and there's nobody behind him that we would rather have taken I mean, I had a couple of interesting tidbits from that draft. And we're talking about Morgan Riley, for those who don't know who the Leafs took fifth overall in the there, there's, If you would redraft that today, Morgan Riley goes first overall. Like, Absolutely. You know what? Yeah. Um, I would say you might get some pushback on one player. Who? Uh, Jacob Truba. Maybe. <laughs> Just because he's right-handed. But yeah, I know. I know that's a stretch. But just to just to have one little devil's advocate in there. Even the contract, though. Look at the contract Riley has right now. Yeah, like, it's it's very very friendly. Um, so in that draft, the Yakupov went first, and he was the consensus number one in all the draft rankings. So it's not like Edmonton yeah. fucked up that pick. Like they didn't. And uh, the, the talk was though that they needed a D man. Like they had just taken Taylor Hall and Nugent Hopkins, the previous first overall. And they and yes. they needed – they were either take – you go draft for need or you draft best player available. Well, here's the fucked up thing about that, okay? Um, 
it went Yakupov, Murray, Galchenyuk. That was the top three. Yeah. The next six players, one, two, three, four, five, six players taken were defensemen. Insane. Eight of the top ten players chosen in that draft were, were defensemen. So it went, the order of selection went Reinhardt, Griffin Reinhardt, then Riley, Lindholm, Dumba, Pouliot, Truba, and Kokic, some guy that didn't pan out. but He still plays in the NHL. Yeah. He's with Chicago. Okay, yeah, that's right, too. So you had, like, you had Dumba and Lindholm and some guys sitting there and Riley. But I, I, I always wondered about Brian Burke's quote that we, that we um, talked about last pod is that he always bombastically in his Brian Burke way kind of said, if we had to pick over, if number one overall, we would have taken Morgan Riley. Yeah. So, yeah. But it was, it was pretty much, I mean, it was, a, it looked like a coin flip. Yeah. So. Let's uh, go to 2011. A little bit more interest there. Uh, just quick about 2012. Cody CC went 15. Was ranked as high as five on some people's scouting. <laughs> and then uh, the sleeper of the draft, in my opinion. Connor Brown. Uh, league wide, though. Colton Pareko at 86. Connor then, Brown, the first rounder. Yeah. yeah. And then Freddie Anderson taken 87 right after uh, Pareko. So that's kind of funny. 2011. It was a make or break year for the Leafs. BC boy, first overall. Two first round picks. Nuge. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Nuge. Uh, a, a buddy of mine at work on Thursday, on Friday, we printed out lists of all 31 NHL teams, all 32 MLB teams. And we had to write down our favorite player all time for all those franchises. <laughs> really like you're doing this now? We did that on Friday at work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Edmonton Oilers was my favorite overall was Nuge. Nice. Yeah. I, I think you look at this draft. I, I don't think, I don't think anyone goes above Nugent Hopkins as first overall. Like I think he, yeah. You can, you can make cases for Landeskog or Hubedro or maybe even Shifley. Mm-hmm. But you know he's, who, he's a solid, solid player. Yes. And you know who the hockey news uh, number one pre-draft ranking player was? Adam Larson. And he, <laughs> and he ended up on the Oilers after all. <laughs> uh, so that's that's kind of interesting little tidbit there. Yeah. Obviously the Leafs with... <laughs> Tyler Biggs and Stuart Percy. Tyler Biggs he at traded 22. up for Tyler Biggs. Yeah, and his his pre draft ranking was twenty two, right where the Leafs took him. Just yeah, yeah. it's a miss. It's a miss, right? And I mean, that's why I I, I put a tweet out last week, and uh, I I said this would be a good opportunity for the league to um not even have a draft put the same players in the draft next year and make it a 19 year old draft now yeah. like it used to be. And uh, I had a decent discussion on Twitter with some people, but that's what you teams would get, know what they're getting more at that stage. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you had to pick, let's just do, let's just keep it as one player because yeah. two players is, is what it is. Who yeah. would you pick there in the 22 spot? Who would have I picked? Yeah. Who would I today? Who would I turn it around and, and become? Um, somebody who's like was reasonably drafted in, drafted in that area. I would have taken uh, now Ricard Raquel at thirty. If those thirty was Ricard Raquel, I would take him instead of Biggs. So you're not you're not taking into consideration the entire draft, though. Uh, I looked down the list and like like yeah, the few people jumped off the page, but uh, this boom, like there's Kucherov and Goudreau. Okay, so I didn't. I, I see. I, I tried to keep it in that realm of like realistic, realistically, who would have been in that sort of. This draft was like draft. ten years ago. Like <laughs> fucking. The... <laughs> <laughs> so who would you take? Good, good Kucherov. Road? Kucherov. Kucherov. Okay. All right. So. Uh, and he went the second round. Like it's. Yeah, that's not that far off because well, okay, and you make a really good point. I'm going to actually concede to you on that one because. They took the Leafs took Stuart Percy at twenty five. Then, yeah, picks later, his pre draft ranking was fucking fifty three. 
So like Berkey went way off the board on that one, and he just did a face plant. It happens. Yeah. So I, and so yeah. So that's uh, if you're gonna go off the board, maybe you should hit on it. Right? <laughs> like would yeah. have been nice. So yeah. So that's the that's the 2011 draft. So yeah, we got we got a total of 12 games out of uh, Biggs and uh, Stuart Percy. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Oh my God! So, what has been your uh, what's your highlight of this past week of the home quarantine? Um, yesterday, I uh, fired up the power washer, emptied the hot tub, refilled it, power washed the deck, barbecued uh, steaks on the barbecue. So we're you hot tubbing every day? Uh, my every other day, maybe. You know what the funny thing is about having a hot tub? is you get so used to it that it almost seems like work like i don't want to i don't want to strip down and then dry myself off it just seems like too much work (laughs) and some people say if i had one i'd be in it every day and then at first you are and that's like oh you mean i gotta dry myself off afterwards then i'll be cold (laughs) so it's kind of like weird but yeah I'll, i'll use it less and less as the days warm up I should make it an ice bath and crush some hard workouts. <laughs> Just fill it with ice. Working out is tough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of home workouts. What was your highlight of the week? Uh, I did like a, a, a family, um, like a beer clock, like a, a 4.30, what it would have been 7.30 their time. Mm-hmm. Beers. Uh, that was a good like hour and a half. Like, nice. Really enjoyable. That was probably my, my highlight. How many windows did you have open? How uh, many screens? Just one. I was just on my phone. There was oh, just on your phone. Well, how many? Two how other many? Okay. Just two other people. Oh, okay. Well, actually, you know what? I did. Uh, I did because I, I have my tennis group of guys, right? And I I decided I'd initiate a Zoom meeting with everybody at five o'clock on Friday as well. And uh, so I put it out there as a group email, and we had ten guys jump in. Yeah, so we talked for do. almost on a, an hour. So, you know, I, I, it's kind of funny because we're using, like, we miss the people that we see in person every day or like, every, like, regularly that we take for granted, like you and I doing the pod in the studio and yep. our coworkers and that. And, but we've also started to even reach out through our, through these uh, Skype and Zoom to our family, dis- our distant family because of this, but we never did before, Right. It's kind of weird because now I now I Skype my family, but I didn't before. So this kind of made me initiated that with 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 uh, people that we don't see in person. If you know what I'm saying. I think there's going to be a big change once this is all over. Of like, like just of how you live life, who you who you what you're doing, and, and I think families will play a big role in that. I think so too. And maybe one day when we just run out of run out of topics. We could just like, because I have a lot of thoughts on how we're going to come back, like how what the workplace is going to look like and lots of things like that. And that'd be kind of fun to just bullshit about that. Maybe get somebody else on with us or something. Yeah. Get one of our old previous guests. Maybe we should get our, let's get our panel together that we had our preseason at the, at the, at fifth street. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I should do? We, I should, I, we, we should, I should listen to that pod take notes and then have those four guys two guys back on in on this format and uh and see. Well, like we could we could go through like we made predictions too at the start of the year yeah for those yeah. like it's it's just all of that's just a waste though because it's all like what if <laughs> yeah because nothing nothing played itself out not even to the end of the regular season it's not like they it's not like the way they even like oh damn they didn't make the playoffs so now our preseason playoff predictions are not valid like nothing's valid nothing <laughs> no so, so let's let's end on this. Except for the um, fact that the team didn't get to play out the season, what's your most disappointing um, individual or player uh, accomplishment that you that you wished you'd been able to see? I think it's pretty obvious. Austin Matthews. Yeah, Matthews scoring fifty. Yeah. Um, or breaking Rick Vibes' record. But that's a big or, deal. That's a huge deal, and he's like, he's, he, yeah, he's got to be pretty disappointed. I mean, it's not even they don't even have bonuses anymore for those things. I don't think in their contracts they're not only allowed rookies. to do those. It's only rookie contracts, but he must be feeling pretty bummed about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
So, all right, man. That's a, that's a wrap. I'll, should we bother going any further back in the draft? Yeah, never, like the next where you're like going to like Nas and Cadre. And... Yeah, and that would just be painful. It would be interesting to see what we would, if who was taken after him. But mm, that was a good, it was a good pick. Yeah. Nas was a good pick. All right. Well, uh, happy Sunday. And uh, how do you feel about uh, maybe once the weather warms up, doing another outdoor one by distance on the driveway? Or is that just pushing the whole, is that setting a bad example? Should, is it like we say stay home? Right. Take it day by day. <laughs> yeah, day by day. Yeah, exactly. I think we're in good shape on the island, so hopefully we can just, you know, maybe be the outliers here. That's the thing, though, is like even if it, we get down to like a few cases a day, it's still going to be like can't do anything. No, no. Okay. As oh, soon yeah. as you do something, it just fucking flares up. Yeah. When do you pull the trigger? It's it's messed up. Yeah. I'm uh I'm stuck in my house with uh, my my son for the, the, the near future. <laughs> Sandra's gone. <laughs> <laughs> She's moved out. Quarantined. All right, man. All right, go, let's go. Go, Jays, go. Thank you.